Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbi ajmain. Allahumma innaka khalaqul azim, innaka sami'ul alim, innaka ghafurur rahim, innaka rabbul arshil azim. His Excellency Mr. Amma Hijazi Ambassador and Assistant Minister of Multilateral Affairs, Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the State of Palestine, His Excellency Mr. Walid Asaf, Minister and Chairman of the Palestinian Authorities Commission on Apartheid Wall and Colonization Resistance, His Excellency Mr. Walid Abu Ali, Ambassador of the State of Palestine to Malaysia, yang berbahagia, Datuk Dr. Rahmat Muhammad, Deputy Vice Chancellor, University Technology Mara, UITM Malaysia, Professor Dr. Moktaz Kofisha, Law Professor at the Hebron University Palestine, Yang berbahagia, Mr. Azril Muhammad Amin, CEO of Centra, Distinguished Guest, Ladies and gentlemen, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh, and a very good evening to all of you in Malaysia, and a good afternoon to all of you in Palestine. My name is Lokman Sharif Alias. I am a lawyer myself, co-head of the My Aksa Legal Team, and will be your moderator for today. Before we start, I would like to welcome all of you to my AXA webinar entitled The Impact of the ICC's Decision in Recognizing the State of Palestine. Ahlan wa salan and selamat datang to all of you. We have lined up today for you a sumptuous evening for those in Malaysia or rather a sumptuous afternoon for those in Palestine with many distinguished speakers of authority to deliver their thoughts and reflections on the recent decision by the International Criminal Court, ICC. We have six outstanding accomplished speakers tonight, with each speaking for about 10 minutes. I am fairly sure by the end of each session, many of you would have been enlightened and updated by the recent development, and we'll have a number of questions for our speakers. So hold on to your questions. We'll be allocating a Q&A session of about 15 minutes, where we'll take in three questions from the Zoom live Zoom audience. And if the time permits, we will take a few more questions from the FB live postings. For those in the Zoom session, you may post your questions in the provided chat box or post it live later. Now, before we continue, continue with the webinar, I, will, I would like to take this opportunity to explain about my AXA involvement in the ICC together the back, with the background of the ICC's decision so that all of us would have a common understanding and context of the issues at hand. It is also my ardent hope that it, it can provide more time for our distinguished speakers to dwell on the effect and impact of the ICC decision. Now, my AXA is an NGO, non-governmental non organization established in Malaysia in 2017 and headed by Mr. Suwardi Yaakob. Its purpose is to further the Palestinian cause and in particular, pursuing the available international legal remedies for the state of Palestine at the ICC. As some of you may already know, ICC is an international tribunal in The Hague, Netherlands, established under an international convention called the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court, or in short, commonly known as or called as the Rome Statute. The statute was adopted at a diplomatic conference in Rome in 1998 and came into force in July 2002. To date, there are 123 parties to the statute. The state of Palestine acceded to the Rome Statute 
in 2015. The Rome Statute establishes the court's functions, jurisdiction, and structure. The ICC was focused on bringing accountability to persons committing the most serious crimes of concern to the international community. It has thus limited to only four grievous crimes, namely one, war crimes, two, genocides, three, crimes against humanities, and finally, crimes against aggression, crimes of aggression. In 2018, and 2019, my AXA sent a delegation to the head to engage with the prosecutor's office on the possibility of commencing an investigation and bringing an action under the Rome Statute for crimes committed on the Palestinian people. We were informed then that they have been receiving submission of evidence of alleged crimes on the occupied Palestinian territory and is open to further receipt of evidence of the commission of the four crimes. The office have also intimated to us in 2019 that it will initiate an official investigation of the situation in Palestine within the year. Pursuant, pursuant to the Hague visit, my AXA had organized a trip to the Palestine, in particular the West Bank. Through the office of the late Sai Arakat, my AXA sent a fact-finding delegation of lawyers to the West Bank in 2019 to collate, to collect evidence and testimonies of violations of the Rome Statute. My AXA compiled and recorded witnesses' account of events that have occurred over the years in the West Bank and had submitted its report to the prosecutor's office in February 2020. Towards this end, my AXA wish to record its utmost gratitude to the late Saim Erkat for all the assistance provided. It was indeed a perilous journey mission for all of us, risking being detained by the Israeli government at any time while we were there, but his office has ensured that we are safely back home. Oh Allah, forgive him, have mercy on him, keep him safe, and sound and forgive him. Honor the place where he settles and make his entrance wide. Wash him with water and snow and hail and cleanse him of his sin as you cleanse his uh, as you cleanse a white garment of dirt. Amin. Ya Rabbul Alamin. Coming back to the ICC, it is important to note that the ICC essentially has jurisdiction over crimes only if they are committed in the territory of a state party or if they are committed by a national of a state party. This is the main issue at hand. Whether Palestine is recognized as a state party and whether the court has juris jurisdiction over crimes in the occupied Palestinian territory and the extent of the territory. Bearing in mind that Israel is not a party to the Rome Statute. The chief prosecutor, Madam Fatou Ben Souda, was acutely aware of the history of the occupied Palestinian territory and the potential jurisdictional issues involved. In order to conduct the investigation if efficacy, in January 2020, she sought a ruling from the chambers of ICC on the jurisdiction of the court over the situation in Palestine. On 28 January 2020, the chambers then sought observations and views from the state and organizations on this issue. It is here again that my AXA submitted its observations and views to the ICC on the 14th of February 2020. Then somewhere in March 2020, the chamber accepted the observation of my AXA as an amicus curiae. Subsequently, after requesting and receiving further responses from the State of Palestine and Israel, the ICC finally, on 5th February this year, delivered a landmark and profound decision. The court, by a decision of 2 to 1, decided that 1. Palestine is a state party to the statute. 2. Palestine qualifies as the state 
on the territory of which the conduct in question occurred for purposes of Article 12.2 of the statute. Third, the court's territorial jurisdiction in the situation in Palestine extends to the territories occupied by Israel since 1967, namely Gaza and West Bank, including East Jerusalem. It is worth noting, it is worthy to note, in deriving to its decision, the court recognized the legitimate rights of the Palestinian people, in particular, the right of self-determination, and that certain measures adopted by Israel in areas of West Bank severely impeded the exercise by the Palestinian people of its rights to self-determination, as enunciated by various United Nations General Assembly resolutions. The court further accepted the United Nations Securities Council Resolution Number no. 2334 that exp explicitly stated that the establishment by Israel of settlements in the Palestinian territory occupied since 1967, including East Jerusalem, constitutes a flagrant violation under the international law. And the Security Council does not recognize any changes to the 4th June 1967 lines. The court concluded, I quote, therefore, in the view of the chamber, the right of the right to self-determination amounts to an international recognized human right within the meaning of Article 21.3 of the statute. The chamber notes that the United Nations General Assembly and the International Court of Justice have affirmed that this right finds application in relation to the occupied Palestinian territory. This is a profound development under the Rome Statute. It is, however, to be noted that the court is determining only with regards to matters under the Rome Statute and not on other parts of international law. The court clearly stated that the court is neither adjudicating a border dispute under international law nor prejudging the question of any future borders. Nevertheless, in, in, in any event, it is a tremendous strike forward for the Palestinian cause. What is the effect, what is the impact of this decision is the subject of this webinar.